Good to see you all today. What a joy it is to celebrate our graduates today. Pastor Ben, thank you for leading us in that time. And graduates, we love you. Uh, and I'm so grateful that we as a church family get to invest into the next generation. I know that matters deeply uh, among us. And I'm grateful that one of the ways we get to make that investment is with Becky Probst, who did our welcome today. Great job, Becky, kicking us off in the service today. You can give her a hand. There you go. Um, Becky, we're so glad that you are here. Uh, thank you, church family, for the warm welcome that you have given Becky. And I'm so grateful for God's call on her life and for these weeks that we have with her uh, just in the month of May. Well, hey, I want to welcome you back to our series that we are working through. This is week five of our series called Spirit Lead Me. As together, we are uh, studying and seeking to understand better who the Holy Spirit is and how he works in our life. Now, last week, we looked at the way that Jesus taught about the work of the Holy Spirit, and this word, this title that Jesus used that also describes the function of the Spirit, and that Greek word is paraclete, and translated, it is such a rich word. And I just want to remind you of this just as we get started today. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. Take this personally. This is good news for you today. He is your helper, your comforter, your advocate, your intercessor, your counselor, your strengthener, and your standby. Amen. What a generous God we have in the provision of his Holy Spirit. I want to remind you again today as we study and as we understand who the Holy Spirit is, it is quite clear, my friend, God is committed to you. God is committed to you. If you need a reminder about that, I want to encourage you to, to listen to last week's message if you haven't had a chance and, and allow that to soak in who the Holy Spirit is and how God is committed to you. Well, to, you know, throughout these weeks, my hope is that as we have been studying the Holy Spirit together, that it has become clear. Perhaps we've been convinced in a fresh way that the Holy Spirit is actively working. That this is not a past reality, but we have the Holy Spirit who is actively working in our world today. Uh, and that's true in your life, just as we uh, look at this passage today, these words of Jesus, that the Spirit dwells in you. Uh, we also have studied the text that says our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, that he is our helper, just as we read. In whatever big things we have going on in our lives, we are not alone. God is with us through the power of his Holy Spirit. That's true for us very personally, and it is true in the world around us. And I'd like for us to think about that today, that, that the Spirit is actively on mission in the world today. This is the continuing mission of God, that he is one who is redeeming and restoring and rescuing. And my friend today, as we dive into the scripture, I hope it will be very clear for us that God is inviting us to join him in his mission, that we are actually invited to participate in what the Holy Spirit is doing around us. I want you to pause this morning and, and consider for just a moment, how would you answer this question? What has God done in your life? I, my, my belief is that every person in this room has a story to tell. The way that, that God loves us, the way God moves towards us, the way God is generous, the way he has given us hope and healing and purpose and joy and freedom. Consider the way that God has worked in your own life and in your own story. And when you think about what God has done in your life, I'm guessing that part of remembering your own story and the way that God has been at work is that part of that story is the way that God has worked through other people in your life. 
right? We all have stories to tell like that. Maybe it was a friend or a family member. Maybe it was a college roommate. Maybe it was a mentor that you've had or, or a coach. Maybe it was a coworker or a neighbor or someone you met at a coffee shop that you've never met before. I don't know who it was, but I know that, that God works through other people. And, and perhaps you can tell the name of the person who helped introduce you to Jesus. And perhaps you can also uh, mention the names of those who have come alongside you and who have helped you and been the hands and feet of Jesus to you in the midst of a deep, dark valley. You see, this is how our God works through one another. This past week, uh, I was at a retreat in Nashville called the Intern Academy. Pastor Ben was there. We took a road trip along with Becky, uh, who's our current inter intern, of course. And if you remember Cassidy Shaw, who interned a few years ago, the four of us took a road trip down to Nashville. We have lots of memories and some really good stories and maybe some fresh dirt on one another as well. But we were there together with interns and coaches from all over the country. Country. And I was so encouraged to see the way that God is moving and the way that God continues to call leaders for the sake of his kingdom. You know, one of the things I loved about this week was just the opportunity uh, and space for conversation with one another. I sat with a friend of mine who I, I another pastor uh, in Indiana, and I hadn't seen him for many years. And we sat a whole group of us at dinner, and, and I began sharing about some of the things that I'm struggling with and questions that I'm asking these days. And I'm telling you, I heard the Lord speak through my friend. <laughs> he reminded me of some things that I needed to hear. It was such an encouragement to me. Then the, the next morning on the retreat, I was so looking forward to it because my youth pastor that I grew up with, his name is Pastor Chris Spitters, and he pastors in St. Joseph, Michigan. He's still there. He was going to lead the morning devotions, and I was so excited to hear from him. And I'll tell you, he got up and he began to pray. And as soon as he began praying, <laughs> the tears just started flowing involuntarily down my cheeks. <laughs> Because, you see, his voice leading, leading us to, to God's throne, goodness, it just took me back. And I thought about all those junior high and high school years and those formative moments in my life and the way that his voice was so impactful, the way that he helped me know Jesus and hearing his voice again leading in prayer, oh, it just stirred something in me. What a reminder that it was for me this week. Uh, this is how God works through one another. And I know if we were to take the, the time today and share all the stories around the room, we'd be here for a few weeks, I think, telling the stories of how God has worked in our lives through others. I wonder who was it in your life? I want to invite you to bring some of those names to mind people who helped introduce you to Jesus, and, and people who have been the hands and feet of Jesus along the way. Maybe it was a word of encouragement or a note that you received or, or a phone call at just the right time or sharing a meal or a cup of coffee, but someone who spoke truth into your life, some hope, some help, Maybe some prayers for you, some wisdom, maybe some redirection, or simply just their presence to be reminded that you are noticed and you are not alone. See, this is God's great design that, that we're to be in community with one another. And this is one of the ways that the Holy Spirit ministers to us through other people. So today, the invitation that is before us, I want to invite you to say yes to God. I want to invite you to say yes to joining the mission of God, his Holy Spirit working through your life in the lives of others. I want you to, to say to the Lord today, I'm available. And I want to invite you to commit yourself to the Lord, a fresh and a new, to, to walk through your life eyes wide open, 
to be watching for opportunities to see where God is at work around you and ways that he's inviting you to join in his mission. See, the Holy Spirit works in us and also through us. That is quite clear to us as we turn to our text today in John chapter 20. As we turn to the, to the text today, this is a, a moment uh, after the death of Jesus, after he has been buried. And it tells us that the disciples are huddled in a room together. It tells us they're in a locked room. They're hiding. They're fearing for their lives. Jesus, their leader, was dead. They, they saw his lifeless body placed into a tomb. But now this was the third day. And earlier that morning, the women said there was a resurrection and it was already starting to stir. But there they were as the disciples, a bit bewildered, asking themselves, could it possibly be? Could Jesus actually be alive? So there they are, overwhelmed and bewildered, locked in this room, no doubt in deep discussion about everything that has been happening. And the text tells us, John chapter 20 at verse 19, on the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed, and the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. What a moment. I have no doubt this is one of those places in the text where words fall really flat. Words are so inadequate to, dis to describe the moment. It says they were overjoyed. <laughs> overjoyed. What else can you say in a moment like that? Their savior was alive. They were in a locked room and miraculously Jesus appears in their presence right there in the middle of their fear, in the middle of their bewilderment. Jesus shows up and he says, peace be with you. This is the ministry of Jesus to their troubled hearts. Think about it. As they gathered there that evening, no, certainly doubt was in the room. Regret was in the room. Fear was in the room. Unanswered questions were in the room. And Jesus showed up in the middle of all of that and he spoke peace. Because his presence is peace. He is the prince of peace. And Jesus was present with them in that. And this is still how Jesus shows up in our lives today. In the middle of our own doubts and regrets and fears and unanswered questions. He shows up in the middle of that as our prince of peace. Maybe, friend, you need that reminder today. In whatever big things you have going on in your life, be reminded that the Prince of Peace is with you. See, he works in us and he works through us. He invites us to join the mission so that others might know this peace. Verse 21, uh, just as we read, let me read it again. And Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Whoa. Can we just let this sink in for just a moment? Jesus the Savior, the one that we know was sent by the Father, right? We know the story for God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus, with this God-sized mission, came to dwell among us. And now Jesus says, as the Father sent me... Now I am sending you. Whoa. Can we 
we just let that sink in for just a moment? Do you read that and have a little bit of panic? Oh, no. (laughs) He's sending us? Has he met us? (laughs) You know, is this really something that would be a good idea? It's a little daunting. How in the world are we, as ordinary people, supposed to continue the mission of Jesus? The scripture says, And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. I've always wondered how did that moment work when he breathed on them. And forgive me, I have a little bit of a sense of humor about that. Because I think, you know, when someone breathes on you when do you notice someone's breath right if you have morning breath you know it can be kind of rough jesus was dead for three days i i don't know i'm wondering is john making note of the breath of jesus because they were in a room together and they all noticed it i don't know i don't know but i think maybe there's a little sense of humor about this Uh, But perhaps we like to imagine it a little bit better than that. I think about when my kids pop a mint in their mouth and and then they'll say, smell my breath. (sighs) Maybe we can imagine it a little bit more like that. But I know Jesus had a sense of humor too. So I don't know. That'll be one of the questions we can ask one day. How exactly did that moment work when you breathe on the disciples? But you see, the point is not his breath. The point is that Jesus was infusing into them the presence of the Holy Spirit. He was telling them, you are sent... But it's not in your own power. It's because of who the Holy Spirit is that is with you. See, their commissioning is not about their own strength or skill. It's the invitation to be spirit-filled, to be spirit-led. And because the Holy Spirit dwells within us, and because he's the one that is leading, then we're invited to participate. And that means when we think about living out this mission of Jesus, that means that we're depending upon the Holy Spirit, that it is his work, and that our task is to listen to his voice. So we need to pay attention to the way that God is working his continuing mission around us. So let's remind ourselves, what is this mission of Jesus? Because as we're watching for the way that God is at work, we need to remember what is this mission that he was sent for. We know that it was early in his ministry when Jesus stunned the onlookers at the local synagogue and he picked up the scroll and he began to describe his own mission by using the words of the prophet Isaiah in Luke chapter 4, beginning at verse 18, Jesus read this from Isaiah, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Did you notice how this started? The spirit of the Lord is on me. Do you see how all of this connects? See, this is the great ongoing mission of Jesus as he describes it here, to take broken things and to set them right, to bring healing and and restoration and freedom, to proclaim to a world that needs good news. Hey, there is good news. God is near and he wants freedom for you. See, this right here, this is the mission of God that continues today. And remember, Jesus clearly said to us, as the Father has sent me, now I am sending you. The Apostle Paul then takes this theme and and says to us, making our identity clear, you are the body of Christ, (laughs) You have the mission of Christ. You are now, as the people of God, the embodiment of who Jesus is. We are the body of Christ. 
That means that, that for us here, right here at Alma Church of God, that means, my friends, we are the embodiment of the mission of Jesus. That Jesus, who came, who was sent with a mission, now invites us to continue that mission as his body on earth. That means that, that Jesus is still moving. He's still working for this mission around us, and he's inviting us to participate. Whoa! <laughs> Isn't that amazing? My friend, I, I hope that as we begin to wrap our minds around that, as we take time to really consider that today, I hope that it excites us, and I hope that it intimidates us a bit, that it feels a bit daunting, that this is what we are invited to participate in. And we remember, it is not about us. This is the work of God. We are not the Savior. That seat is already taken. We simply get to be the vessel, to be available so that God can work through us. That's his design. We are his plan. I'd like for us to affirm that today. Uh, I've adapted these scriptures to personalize them, and I want to invite you to read this aloud with me. We are the body of Christ the Spirit of the Lord is on us because he has anointed us to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent us to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. See, our God is still moving. This is still the mission that he is about all around us today. As St. Teresa of Avila so eloquently wrote, Christ has no body now on earth but yours. No hands but yours. No feet but yours. Yours are the eyes through which Christ looks out with compassion to the world. Yours are the feet with which he is to go about doing good. Yours are the hands with which he is to bless others now. Amen. See, this is the mission of God, and this is our invitation. You know, I wonder what God might be up to. And I wonder what might happen if we together as a people on this day were to mark this day and recommit ourselves, maybe for the first time or for some as a recommitment, to say, God, we, we want to be available for you to work through us. You know, I like to frequently remind us that, that I believe that our church is uniquely positioned for this very mission. Now, we know that we are uniquely positioned in our city right here downtown. We have visibility and we have influence. But we also need to pause and think about what we mean when we say our church is uniquely positioned for this mission. Now, when Jesus said, I will build my church, he was not talking about a building right? Can we make that clear? When Jesus said, I will build my church, he wasn't talking about a building. The Greek word is ekklesia, which means a gathering or an assembly of people, not bricks, people who are called out for a specific purpose. See, the church is not a building. The church is a people, and we are the church, now, if the church were only a building, then when we look at a map on our city, it would look like this. This one pinpoint, this awesome location in a great city, there we are on the map. But if the church is a people, then it looks like this. <laughs> you see the difference? You see, we get to be the body of Christ, the church. We are people who are on a mission. People spread far and wide in our community and throughout central Michigan, perfectly positioned to have influence. 
You know, we, oft, we use this image to represent our church of a stained glass window, which is actually a map of our city. And the idea is that it will remind us every time we see it that we have a mission in our everyday, ordinary lives. As it says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 from the message, Here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Today, my friend, I think the invitation is before all of us. It's the invitation from Jesus. And today, I want to invite you to say yes to God to joining him in his mission. And I want to invite you to to say to the Lord, I'm available, and to commit yourself to live eyes wide open, to watch for opportunities around you, to join in what God is doing. Because I believe that each one of us, each one of us in our everyday lives, that there are people all around us who need some good news. There are people all around us who need some good news, who need some encouragement, who need some help, some friendship, some care. There are people all around us who long to be noticed, to be seen, to be remembered. And my friend, you are uniquely positioned in their life as a person of influence. And today, I wonder what would happen if you were to accept the invitation to join with God's mission in the life of another person, that you can actually be a person who helps speak life and and freedom and encouragement. See, we've been talking for weeks about who the Holy Spirit is and how he works in our lives. And I pray that for all of us, that we are growing in our awareness of who the Spirit is and how he works. Today, I want to take God at his word to believe his promise that he is commissioning us and inviting us to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And I know that can feel inspiring and it can feel daunting at the same time. But remember, our role is not to be the Savior. But we simply are invited to join God in what he is doing. You know, when you walk next door to his place and you look up near the ceiling, there's a verse there painted on the wall, Zechariah 4, 6. Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. That's a powerful verse to have in a place like that. A building that that we've dedicated to serve and love our community generously with no strings attached. And to remember that as we do that, it's not about us. And it's not about our might. It's not about our power. It's who the spirit is. And how we are watching the Spirit work in the lives of all of those that we connect with. And how we are invited to join the work of the Spirit. See, this invitation to join God's mission is not about doing these great, grand things ourselves. It's God who does the work. We're simply invited to join Him. We think about how that's true with the disciples. Sometimes we look back and we think about the disciples. They become larger than life to us. And we think of these giants of the faith. But then we remember as we read their stories that it wasn't quite that way. In Acts chapter 4, verse 13, it says, When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and took note that these men had been with Jesus. My prayer is that people might take note, not of who we are, but that we have been with Jesus. Earlier, I asked you to think about some of the people who have impacted your own faith journey. Think about some of those names and faces. Do you notice something? Do you know there's no superhumans in the mix, right? (laughs) These are ordinary people who stepped out, 
to care, to encourage, to speak some life, to love generously, to notice you. I want for us today to to pause for a moment of prayer. And I'd like for us to pause, knowing that the Holy Spirit dwells here around us and within us, that we would ask the Lord to bring someone to our own minds and hearts. Think about who you interact with every day. Maybe there's someone you know who's going through a difficult time, someone who's hurting, someone who's alone, someone who's overwhelmed, maybe lacking resources or seeming to to struggle in one way or another. Maybe it's a family member of yours, or maybe it's a neighbor or a coworker. Maybe it's a fellow parent that you see at pickup sometimes. Or maybe it's a local employee at a business that you frequent. Or maybe an entire family is coming to mind. I'm going to invite you to pause with me and pray right now. Gracious God, we pause in your presence. Lord, I ask right now that you would help us to be sensitive to the move of your Holy Spirit in our midst. God, I I ask right now, I come with my brothers and my sisters as we come before you and we ask, God, who is on your heart today? Where are you working? Who's on your heart? Lord, we humbly ask that you might invite us to join you in what you're doing in the lives of those around us. Would you help our hearts to be sensitive right now in this moment as you bring those people, those names to mind? And Lord, we commit ourselves to you. We don't exactly know what to do, but we know who you are. And so we open ourselves now to the leading of your Holy Spirit. And we thank you for inviting us to join you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As we pray this morning, uh, maybe the Lord has brought a name or two or a family to the forefront of your mind. Or maybe not. Perhaps the Lord has yet to reveal someone to you. Um, Keep waiting. Keep seeking. Even if God did bring a name to your mind or your heart this morning, keep waiting and keep seeking Because this is not an event. This is a lifetime posture, right? That we get to say, wow, God's working around us. He's inviting me to be aware and to join him. So keep leaning in. Keep asking God where he is working. You know, when we think about this, when the Lord does bring someone to mind, I want want to remind us today that that, uh, we don't ask God to do this because we plan to treat this person as a project. Can I be clear about that? (laughs) Our intention is not to facilitate a certain outcome. We're not the savior. That seat is taken. But rather, we're invited to join God in what he's doing because he is pursuing and redeeming and restoring. It's his work. And we are invited to participate. Today, I I want to invite you to respond to this invitation of Jesus, Uh, not only for perhaps a specific person or names that have come to mind, but really as a life posture today. I want to invite you to respond in a tangible way, affirming that, that God is anointing and sending you. In Luke chapter 4, the language that Jesus used there, there is that the spirit of the Lord is on me. He has anointed me. He has sent me. And then Jesus said, as the father has sent me, so I am sending you. Today, we have an opportunity for anointing. 
We've practiced anointing at different times here as a part of our service. And, and the way that we often think about anointing is one of the ways that is clearly identified in Scripture, especially James chapter 5. We often turn to that passage, which invites us uh, to receive anointing and come together and ask for the Lord's healing. We often do that. It's very appropriate for us to do that. And today, I want to invite us to think about anointing in a different way that is also very clear throughout the journey of Scripture. It's anointing for a calling. You think about in the Old Testament, when there is a prophet or a priest or a king, there is a moment of anointing. It's a moment of consecration, a moment of dedication. As a very ordinary human (laughs) says yes to God. So today, I'd like for us to practice anointing as a moment of dedication. We're invited to understand oil in the scripture as a reminder of God's presence, his promise, his power. So in just a moment, there will be a few of us here at the front. And I would invite you to come forward today specifically as a way of saying yes to God. That as you walk forward to be anointed, that, it, that it's a way of saying, God, I'm yours. I'm available. I'm trusting the Spirit's leading in my life. When you come forward, we have uh, these little vials of oil and we'll uh, place a small cross on your forehead uh, there in oil. It's a symbol of God's presence. And we're simply going to speak an affirmation over you. It's the, these are the words of Jesus from John chapter 20, as we'll say, peace be with you. As the Father has sent Jesus, so he is sending you. And then you can return to your seat and continue in worship. And then in a few minutes, I will lead us in prayer. Now, perhaps this is a new experience for you. Maybe you've never participated in anointing before. I'm not trying to make you feel uncomfortable today, but I am trying to invite a moment of courage because I believe the spirit is moving in this place. I believe the spirit is moving in your life and he is inviting you to join him in his mission. So if today you're ready to say yes to God for the first time or in a renewed way, then I invite you to come forward. I I pray that there will be an anointing of the Holy Spirit upon us as his people here in this place today. The worship team is going to come now and lead us. We have two songs ahead. I'd invite all of you to stand. Let's worship wholeheartedly. And when you are ready, I invite you to come forward and be anointed.